My name is Paul Zamet and I'm the Nancy Eden Director of Horticulture here at the Toronto Botanical Garden and one of my main responsibilities is to oversee our award-winning gardens. I share this with our head gardener Sandra Pella and we maintain the gardens not only as a, as a source of aesthetic beauty but also as a source of inspiration and we use it as an education tool for the public and our many many thousands of visitors as well as those who attend our educational programs every year. An invasive species is an introduced species, a non-native or non-indigitive species that gets into an area and has an impact on the habitat both from an economical and an ecological standpoint. In Ontario we see a wide range of invasive species and it's important to recognize that invasive species can either be plant or animal. Example of a plant that we're dealing with here at the Toronto Botanical Garden include things like garlic mustard and drog strangling vine. The impact of an invasive species is they often can outcompete many of our native species. Because they are not native to these areas, they do not have predators that are going to naturally feed on them, whether it's feeding on their foliage, keeping them in check, or feeding on their seeds and preventing them from spreading. Many of them are also very aggressive, and in that they outcompete the natives by outgrowing them and competing for habitat, whether it's light, soil conditions, or uh, nutrients to grow. Dog straggling vine is a challenge. It's an invasive species that has gotten into our gardens here at the Toronto Botanical Garden and we're dealing with it across southern Ontario and into the, the U.S. It's a challenge because it's a rapidly growing vine that has no predators here. So nothing is feeding on its foliage and or feeding on its, its flowers. And as a result, it is seeding across and outcompeting many of our natives. There's a few things that people need to be aware about dog straggling vine. It can grow in a wide range of soil conditions. It's very aggressive in terms of its growth habit can grow very quickly in a very short period of time. It smothers things out, but it also does things beneath the ground. It can actually change the soil ecology, uh, affecting uh, microbial populations. So changing what happens beneath the ground and changing that habitat for many of our native plants. So dog strangling vine is a perennial vine that grows typically as a single stem and grows very, very upright. It produces this long stem with these oval dark green leaves that are arranged in an opposite pattern along the stem. As the plants mature, they do produce these star-shaped little dark brown or maroon or burgundy flowers, which eventually lead to the very characteristic seed pods. Two of my favorite tools for combating dog strangling vine here at the Toronto Botanical Garden include a good quality pair of pruning shears to constantly be ready to cut off any developing flower heads or seed heads to prevent seed from forming. And the other one that I really like, a bit dangerous but watch out for it, is the Japanese gardening knife. This is really fantastic for being able to dig out the young seedlings and being able to get down and deep. It's also really great for the spring when those young seedlings are just beginning to form to go through and cultivate the soil and disturb them and simply not them back. One method we've used here at the Toronto Botanical Garden to help reduce the spread of dog strangling vine is by physically removing the plant. If you can't do so, one thing that is very, very important is to prevent it from flowering. As a result of flowering, it will produce all of these seeds which will germinate next year and continue the spread. So what we recommend is if you can't remove the plant, at least come through and remove the developing flowers. Get rid of those. Cut down the spread of the seed. A few of my do's and don'ts about dealing with dog strangling vine. Please do not, do not, do not, do not ignore this plant. You want to constantly be trying to keep it in check, preventing it from seeding. The other thing that I don't recommend is on larger, more mature plants, don't pull it. What we have found and where we've gotten good control is simply continually cutting it off or mowing it at the ground level. And we're seeing populations in decline. We're basically starving the plant. Some dews, when you see those flowers, even if you can't get it removing the plant, just simply cut the flower heads off. Your goal is to reduce it or prevent it from going to seed and spreading that seed across the landscape and increasing the number of plants. And also, if the plants are quite large, one way that we have found we're getting control is not pulling it. As a 
result of pulling it, you often get it to splinter, produce more plants. So the larger plants, what we do is we cut them off constantly, just below the soil level. And what that does is it weakens the plant and begins to starve it. In the spring, what you do want to do is monitor the areas where you have had a problem with dog straggling vine and look for those really young seedlings. They're very easy to control by cultivating the soil. When plantlets are about this high and the soil is moist, you can also very successfully dig them out. But as they get larger, remember the important technique of starving them. What we have demonstrated are techniques to help control it or slow the plant down or reduce the population. We all need to do our part to keep dog straggling vine in check and to try and prevent its further spread in the landscape. This is Paul Zamet from the Toronto Botanical Garden hoping that some of the techniques we have shared with you today will help you successfully manage dog strangling vine within your own home garden.